Andrew Greif of the Oregonian, alongside Tyson Alger of the Oregonian. We're at the Rose Bowl, where Oregon uh, just beat number 18 UCLA. Saved a season, one could say. Two losses was going to be really hard to rebound from, not only in the national picture, but in the Pac-12, uh, where a lot of things are going crazy today. It, maybe it was just one game, as Oregon says, but it was a very good game. Defense, offense, what jumped out? I, I think the thing you got to start with is to play the offensive line in the running game. You had Jake Fisher back in there, which you wouldn't think out of a group of five people that putting one guy back in there would make the huge difference. But today, Marcus Mariota was only sacked one time. I believe so. I believe so. Uh, Oregon had their first 100-yard rusher of the season and Royce Freeman. Thomas Tyner even looked good out of the backfield. And this was all after they had to alter their game plan after Keenan Lowe went out with the first quarter injury. They were going to have Byron Marshall in the backfield a little bit more today. Byron went back out to receiver, and you still had a very successful play out of the backfield and on the line today. Yeah. Head coach Mark Helford said it's too simple just to say that Jake Fisher's return is what brought this, but it really was. I mean, Steve Greatwood, who's offensive line coach, said that what Fisher brings is a calming influence and a little bit of an attitude. And that's not to say, as he put it, he'd want to, like, backhand, you know, the, the rest of the guys yeah. say he was missing, but something wasn't going right in the last two weeks when they allowed 12 sacks. It was Brett Hummy today who felt the pressure, not Oregon, and that was very key. And Hunley looked very impressive at times. He was he was dodging tacklers. He was he was making plays. He held on to the ball a very long time on a lot of those, and Oregon's defense was able to finally get to him at certain points, even though Eric Armstead was on, on the bench today with that injury. Yeah, there are a couple of really long drives UCLA had where if they scored touchdowns there, it's a different game, absolutely, especially when they had their late comeback. But they got held to field goals, and one of those I thought especially was Joe Walker, uh, Third and two at about the 22-yard line of Oregon. They'd gone about uh, 52 plays, about seven, 52 yards on seven plays before that. Looked like they could score, and he stuffed a Nate Starks for a one-yard loss. UCLA ends up missing that field goal. Really big play. I mean, it kind of summed up the defense today with, or in the first half, first three quarters anyway, uh, a big play. They usually made it. Yeah. No, it I think you can take a lot of things from the way the defense played today and be able to put like a grain of salt on it because during that during that first half, before that final touchdown to make it 10, they it was they had allowed three points, but it was still like 252 yards of offense, 15 first downs, but they got the results that they wanted, and ultimately that's the defensive job. Is in the first half they allowed 10 yards, they allowed some bonus points there in the fourth quarter. Uh, Ifo was talking about how they played three good quarters. They weren't happy at all with the fourth. They're still looking to put together a complete game, but this was night and day compared to last week. Absolutely. And now, as Oregon, every Oregon fan probably likes, it's Washington week, the rivalry. Oregon's won 10 straight games against Washington. No doubt things a little, a little more sunnier if you're a Duck uh, teammate or player or fan this week going into the first matchup with Chris Peterson at home.